How's it going, everybody? International Master Daniel Wrench here for Chess.com's YouTube channel. Today we have a member analysis mini. That's right. Get excited if you're a member of Chess.com. You too can become a real YouTube video and be immortalized with either bad play or good play, but usually I'll find a way to criticize you anyway. I don't know why. It's probably unworked out childhood pain. But anyway, here we have a scotch, and again, I'm not always picking games just because they're an opening that I tend to play. These days I'm mixing it up a lot more. Just games that maybe have some obvious mistakes, and I would say that the mistakes I'm going to be highlighting for this video are definitely geared toward the beginner, maybe lower level intermediate type of tournament player. So if you feel like you're an advanced player and you're too good for us, well then go find somewhere else to play for the next five minutes. Here we have a scotch, and typically what white does in the scotch is open the center quickly to challenge black as far as getting pieces on the most active squares possible. We all know the center is very important, correct? Well... The thing is that in doing so, white also opens up dark square diagonals. So typically the best way for black to challenge the scotch is either with bishop c5 or with knight f6 to attack e4 and meet moves like knight c3 with bishop e4 and bishop to c5. Black needs to be as aggressive as white is as far as challenging the center. In this game, black played queen f6 right away, which is also a possible move order. Uh, it's debatable if it's the ideal move order, but black has to play queen f6 with the intention to meet knight takes c6 with the move bishop to c5. This move creates a double attack on f2. White must deal with that threat of checkmate. And in the process, uh, after white deals with that, black can then take back on c6 with the pawn. And these positions are basically completely equal. Dynamically, I can say that I've played them from both sides. Black develops with moves like bishop e6, rook d8, gets more of an initiative in the beginning of the game. White has the long-term positional advantage of a four-on-three pawn structure. In this game, Black either didn't know theory, and, and that's kind of a sign when you play the move queen f6, because most people who try to reach that line do so with bishop c5 first, and then meet knight takes c6 with queen f6. So already when we saw queen f6, we might have had a clue that somebody was a little off track. And after knight takes c6, when black plays queen takes c6, we can definitely say that's the first mistake, and it suggests that black not only doesn't know the theory, but is getting a little bit off track as far as principles go, moving the queen already twice in the beginning of the game, and it's not even that that's the end of the world. Black can almost be equal with, with the correct play from here on out. But whenever you see people playing moves like this, it suggests they're trying to have the big girl go play with the kids on the playground. And we all know that once you weigh more than 150 pounds, you shouldn't be doing monkey bars, okay? Because bad things happen. But seriously, in this situation, the queen doesn't want to mix it up with the kids. And that's what happens in this game. In the process of black not understanding that principle and really not emphasizing that whenever you have an open center in the opening early on, you need to emphasize king side before queen side development. I'm going to say that again because it's a tip people might not have known. If you have openings that are opening the center quickly, there are openings that don't do it so quickly, but the scotch is one that does. You need to emphasize king side before queen side. Why? Because getting the king out of the center against gambits and open dynamic games is much more important for his safety as well as getting the rooks involved. So this type of thing of moving the queen twice and then you'll see that black doesn't emphasize this concept ends up getting him in big trouble trouble. So after knight c3, black should probably play bishop e4 as the member who said it into me noted. After moves like queen to d4 with a double attack, you can take here and double the pawns. And white's still a little bit better with the bishop pair as he notes, and I agree. But, but this isn't even still the end of the world for black until we get to this situation here where black once again doesn't take the opportunity to do king side before queen side and he needs to get developed solidly before white even play simple plans like king h1 and, and trying to use his pawn majority that you always have in a scotch. Instead, black plays c6 and then b5, wasting two tempos to attack this bishop, which makes you feel warm and cozy in this situation because you're thinking, oh, right, here's some, some discoveries and we're going to get a little tax on f2 and everybody's happy and Bob's your uncle and, uh, you know, etc., etc. But this shows that even material can't really make up for this type of aggressive neglect of your king when your opponent is as fully developed as white is here. White immediately plays an aggressive move, e5. I would almost even say that natural moves that develop, the member noted here that a move like bishop e3 was probably already pretty good because if black takes here, it unleashes the coordinated long-distance relationship. So that's not good. And in that case, if black has to waste the tempo to move the bishop, then bishop e3 followed by you know, moving the rook and then just a normal type of scotch plan was probably also totally fine. But white played e5, and after queen f5, now bishop e3, which again invites this tactic. e5 is, is a fine way to do it too. And here black's last chances, probably 
to retreat this bishop maybe, allow for an equal trade, not take here and open up white's rook, but but say, okay, I understand I need to learn my lesson. I'm going to protect my bishop and then go back to getting my king safe. But here black falls in love with the discovery idea, neglecting his opponent's threats. After bishop takes c5, bishop takes f1, he probably calculated that at the end of long lines like this, he was going to be up the exchange with a situation where he won the rook and the knight on c3 in exchange for the two bishops, which I have to note, I'm not even sure I like this position for black. The uh, member maybe analyzed it with a computer and maybe would have thought this was not so good for him, but I don't I don't even see the black king gaining out of the center here. The queen can't take because that's a pin town. If the knight moves to h6, you're not opening really up your ability to castle. Knight e7 doesn't threaten to castle either because I'll just take the knight after you do. And so if I'm white here, I could still play things like rook to d1 and maybe bring the queen out. And I would expect that there would be plenty of compensation here for the exchange. I would still prefer white, even if Beth's play makes it unclear. But uh, in this situation, white found something even better than queen takes f1, which really punishes the king. Queen to d6, exclam of the arch, boom town in your face, and all of a sudden black is like, oh wait, right, what happened here? And there's checkmate on f8. It's coming at yeah, high, and in that situation, you no longer even worry about the knight here. Black is not going to survive. He played the best move with castles long, but white really, he showed some class here, I'm not going to lie. White white put on, the, um, put on his best dancing shoes and put the game away. He played knight to d5, which... I personally think it might have been a little bit unnecessary. Bishop takes a7 seems to potentially also do the trick. I know it could be met by king to b7, but I'm imagining that even variations where I retreat the bishop and then just pick up this pawn with check while you're trying to save this probably leave white with a pretty awesome lasting attack. Also, you could say that moves like knight a4 here. If you take, I give check here, and I'm either mating you with queen b6 or king a8, and I'm mating you with knight to b6. So... Potentially, actually, knight a4 is much better than retreating the bishop. So bishop takes a7, I think, might have been the most accurate way to clean up. But white was uh, feeling frisky, and he didn't want to miss the knight because it was ladies' knight. And so he played knight d5, threatening checkmate on c7. And after black, if black had taken here, probably both bishop takes b, b a7 again, threatening mate here. And if king b7, we have check town and either mate on b8, or if you go here, mate on d5 would have done the trick. So black didn't take there, instead played king to b7, but once again, it wasn't enough to escape the inevitable, and we ended with checkmate on b6. So these types of mini miniature games are much more likely to be placed into the member analysis mini series here on YouTube. They're not as likely to get full-scale analysis where we really break down everything in depth over on chess.com, but if you want to see regular member analysis to much more... Probably more equally fought games, a little bit higher quality games by both sides, and in that case, the, the analysis also tends to be a little more instructive. You can go become a Chess.com member. For everybody else, hopefully you enjoy these other strategy-style sessions along with the live sessions and bullet brawls here on YouTube. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter to stay tuned for when those things are happening, and everybody else, I will see you around on Chess.com.